Hi and welcome to PeaceMeg TV. In today's video tutorial for WordPress, I'm going to be taking you through using Slider Revolution 5 to create dynamically generated sliders. Now we're not going to limit this to just text, we're going to look at how we can use the post title, description and content and link through to the relevant post. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. Now Slider Revolution 5 is great at creating slider content that we lay out and specify exactly what we want on each slide. But where it gets even more powerful is where we go in and we dynamically generate that content from new posts on our website. So we're going to take a look at using specific posts in this example, but you could just as easily use post-based and that will allow you to specify exactly what category and it'll pull in the latest post in whatever kind of order you want. We're going to use specific posts because we haven't actually covered this in any previous video but the principle is pretty much exactly the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the content source and we're gonna set that to be specific posts. We're gonna come in and you can see we've got some new options available to us and what we can do at this point is we can put the code in for any particular post that we want to use. Now there's an easy way to find out what the codes are for this and I'll show you that in just a second. But on top of being able to manually specify exactly what posts you want, you'll see we have some options to add in popular posts and also to add in recent posts. So you can see if we click on that, that'll pull in X number of recent posts. And you see there's quite a few in there. And obviously you want it to, we can easily delete the ones we don't want. The only rule when you're doing this is you have to specify each one and separate it with a comma. So let's just delete that. And you can see it tells us what to do in here. So you can see we can also add popular posts in there. We can then specify how we want those to be displayed so we can sort them by post ID, date, title and so on. We can also specify the sort direction, whether they go descending or ascending, the maximum number of posts per slider. Now I'd recommend generally keeping this a little lower, probably about four or five. And then you've also got the limit to the excerpt to 55 characters. So if we want to manually input the specific posts we want, we need a way of finding out exactly what the number or the post number is for every single post. So the easiest way to do that is if we just open up the post section. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And what I'm going to do is you can see we've got a whole range of posts in here. And if I come over any of these, if we take a look at the bottom section on the screen, you can see that it gives us the code. So if we look at the bottom, bottom left hand side, you'll see we've got post equals 1169. If we click on this to edit it, you can see we've also got it in the title bar at the top. So the 1169 in this example is the actual ID for this specific post. So what we could do if we wanted to is just make a note of a couple of these different posts. And if I just jump back into the list of all posts and choose a different one, you'll see that that gives us a different number. So we've got 1160. So that's the number that we need. So what we need to do now is jump back into Slider Revolution and what we can do is we can manually input these numbers. So we'll start off with 1169, then a comma, then 1165. And finally, we're going to put 1160 in there. So I'm limiting this to just three posts. The next thing we need to do is just give this a name and we're going to call this Dynamic Slider. There we go. So the next thing we can do is come down and we can specify the type of slider that we want. So we're going to leave this as standard slider for this example, but if we wanted to choose one of the other ones, anything but the hero scene, because obviously that just only shows one slide, but we could choose any of the other alternatives and use those. We can then come in and specify the slide layout, whether it's auto, full width or full screen. I'm going to leave this to auto. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to be 550 pixels high and everything else I'm going to leave as it is on there. I'm going to come up then to the layout and visual and what I'm going to do is where it says dotted overlay I'm going to click on there and I'm going to set that to be two by two black and that's just going to put a two pixel by two pixel overlay which will darken the image down ever so slightly and it means that what we put on top will just stand out that little bit better. So that'll do for me for now I'll just hit the save on there and that'll take us over then so we can start working with actually creating the slider itself. So there's a couple of things we need to do if we come up to the featured image and click on there. What we'll find now is if I save this and preview it, that's gonna take a look at the featured image on the three slides or the three posts that I've just selected. And that will then show us if we preview this, 
you'll see that that will call up and show us there's the first slide. And as we let it transition through, it'll show us the second, which is the featured image on the second post and the third and so on. But however many we set up on there. So there's the second one. So you can see we've got the basics are already set up on there now. So we've got the slider pulling in that information. So the next thing we can do now is we can come in and we can start creating the things we want to sort of overlay on there. Now for this example, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. We're going to put the post title and we're also going to put a brief sort of section of the actual content so people can see exactly what the name of the post is about and they can find out a little brief explanation of what the page is going to be about. But you could, if you wanted to, reference various different aspects of your post. So let's take a look at how we do that. Now, same with everything else, we're going to come up, we're going to add some new layers. So we're going to come over, we're going to say text HTML. And you can see we normally get the option to now just type in whatever we want. But we've also got this little funnel symbol. And if we click on that, we've now got a whole range of different meta tags we can use. You can see we've got post. If you've got WooCommerce installed, you'll see we've got WooCommerce as an option. We've got gallery image and we've got images. We then have a whole range of different tags. And if we switch through these, you can see the, there's different ones in different sections. So you can see we've got images, we've got a whole range in there. We're going to keep this under post because we're working with the posts. And you can see we can put in the post title, an excerpt, an alias, content, content limit by words or characters, link to the post and so on. So what we're going to do to start off is we're going to put the title in there. So we're just going to click to insert the title. That will then insert this little bit of code. So we just delete where it says caption one. And that's now put that in there. So we can just tick that off. That's been done. Let's add another layer in, another text HTML layer. We'll hit the little funnel again, and this time we're going to come down and we're going to choose content limited by words. So we can click on that, get rid of the caption text too, and you can see now we've got content colon words colon 10. So at the moment that's saying it's going to limit this to 10 words. Let's set that to 50 just to give it a bit more information. And there's a simple rule with this. You can see that everything is is proceeded and at the end of it you've got the double curly brackets so that's telling that that's a little short code that we're using so we'll just tick on that to confirm it and all we're going to do is just separate these out click on the title one click to the center click on the content and we'll just align these roughly where I want them to be so now we can style these we can animate them and do all the things that we normally do to any sort of text layer or any kind of layer we want to do on this and then we can sort of come down and we can adjust the uh, the timing and everything on this. So let's do that first of all. So let's come to the title. Let's just click on that and let's go up and let's just choose a different font. So let's just go for my usual one, which is Railway. We'll set a font size of being about 36. And we'll set a line height of 40 just to give it a bit of space. And we'll leave the character width. That's fine. Yellow's fine for now. We can leave that as is. The thing I want to do though is I want to come over where it says auto line break on off. We want to check that on because what that'll do is when it sort of goes past the, the width that we want, it'll automatically put a line break to go to the next line down. So what we can do now is we can specify the size that we want this to be. So let's just set that to be, well, let's go for a thousand pixels. That'll be fine. Auto height so that'll expand as it need be. And then what we can do is we can just align that as we want. So if we come into the advanced section and we come down to spaces we can come up to where it says inherit just click on there and set that to be center so that now centers the text so let's do the same now for the one below so let's click on that we're going to put some padding in there because we're going to put 20 pixels all the way around and what we're going to do is we're going to set that to be centered as well we'll come up and we'll change the font on there to railway we'll set the font size to be 16 which should be fine color of white that's fine what we're going to do then is we're going to cut a background and we're going to set a background of black and what we'll do is we'll set that to be just a little bit transparent so we've set that to 0.8 so that now puts the transparency in there for us so let's just save that and let's preview it and see where we are right now okay so let's hit that preview and take a look let that load in and as you can see there's everything we want on there but if we notice the text block itself isn't wrapping so what i need to do is come back out of that just simply come up, make sure I've got that selected, and just hit the auto line break again. And we'll set this to be, we'll set this to be 800. No, actually set this to 1,000, the same as the title. That's fine. So we set that to 1,000 pixels. Save that. And now if we refresh that and take a look, we should find now our text loops around. So there we go. So we've now got exactly what we'd expect. 
Finally, we're just going to pop in a button at the bottom so we can specify that we want to give the, the viewer the ability to click to go to another page. So let's just come back up to add layer. We're just going to come down to button. We'll choose any of the button types. It doesn't really matter too much from this point. So we'll click on that. That's fine. We'll just position that roughly where I want it. We'll just set that to be a line center. Let's just save the page and check that out. See if we need to make any tweaks to it. As you can see, the button needs to be specified for the size. So let's just go back and do that. So we'll just go back to the button, make sure we've got that selected, and we'll set that to be 140 pixels. It'll be fine. Hit save. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually give that a link. Now, we don't know what the link is going to be for this because obviously this is going to change dynamically. So we can compensate for that quite easily. Just specify, give it a click on this. And all we need to do now is give it the link. So if we come up to uh, actions, and we give it a click on to add a new action and we say click change that from disabled and we say simple link we don't want a jquery link we want an a tag link and all we need to do now is put those curly braces in put the word link in and close the curly braces that's now dynamically going to generate the link on that button for us so again let's just hit save and if we just come back up and preview that we see there's our button. If we take our mouse over, the button works. We've got the text there. Everything else is in line. So let's just come back in now. Let's just adjust the animation on those a little bit. So let's just offset each one of those in there. So we've got the title. We'll offset that a little bit. And we'll set that to be around 600 milliseconds. We'll do the same again for the content. Again, about 600 milliseconds. And finally for the button, we'll do the same again. Here we go, 600 milliseconds. Save that. And let's just take a little look. So as you can see now, everything animates in nicely and we've got the link ready to start working with it. So let's just click X out of that. Now let's load a page in where we've got this set up and I can show you how it works, how it looks on the page and how those links work and take you through to the relevant section of your site. Okay, so here we are on our test page, and you see we've got the slider embedded into our site. There's our first slide. Everything is working the way you expect it to. We can just wait for that now to transition through the second one, and you can see the animation works. So we don't have to do this animation each time because we're setting the global parameters up for it. But we wait for the next one to load in, and we'll try the Click Here button. So you can see this is for the Pop Audio Filter. So if I click on that, that should then take us through to that particular post. And there we go. Easy. But what this does give you is a huge amount of power over creating dynamically generated sliders of your latest posts and information. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. Until next time, take care.